Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to my channel. Hope all of you are doing very well today. The topic for today's session is how to configure a create case smart shape in Pega. So let's log in into the application. And let's get started with the configuration. Okay, so let me switch to the Dev Studio. Okay, so let me explain, <clears throat> excuse me. So let me explain the use case that we are planning to build today. So I have two different case types which I have set up already. So one is the training case type, which is the one that I have been using across my sessions. And along with this, I have also created a new case type, which is the feedback case type. Okay, so this has just one stage. Now, um, the requirement that I'm trying to explain today is, uh, I'm going to explain today is how to create a new case, new top level case from an existing case. Okay, so training case is our existing case and I will try to create feedback case, which is a top level case. It's not a child case, but it's a top level case from this particular training case. Okay. Along with this, I will also be showing how to propagate the data from training to the feedback case and how to store the ID of the feedback case that gets created on the training case. So these are the three things that I'm going to show today. Okay, so first of all, uh, let me run the feedback case standalone and show you that as of now, it doesn't have any data. So if you see the review student details screen, this is empty because I have not done the configuration yet. I'll be doing it now. And once the configurations are complete, then uh, this screen should show up some data in read-only format. Okay, so that is what the expectation is. So let's close everything and let's refresh the training case. So let us try to add a um, create case part shape. So how do you do that? So for that, you need to add a step, go to more, click automations, and then here you see an option called create case. Okay, so we'll select this. On the right hand side, if you see the configurations, so it is asking us that if you want to create a case, which is the top level case option, or if you want to create it as a child case. So like I told, uh, I'll be creating it as a top level case. So for that, we need to select the first option. So top level case means it's a standalone case and it does not have any parent child relationship with the training case. Okay. So that is what it, this option means. So then you need to select which case type you want to create. So for me, it's the feedback case type. So this data transform is an option that Pega provides us to propagate the data from the training case to the feedback case in this scenario. So let us write a data transform. Okay. Propagate data. Okay, let's name this like this. Let's click on create. So if you see, this is getting created in the feedback class. So the primary page for this particular role will be the feedback. Let's create and open. Now, I already have a property called a student details that I have created. So let me show this property. Okay, this is created in work class so that it can be successfully used in both the case types. Okay, so what I want to do, and this is a page. So what I want to do, I want to populate the details on the feedback case for this particular page from the training case. Okay, so for that, first let's define the PY worker page, which will be our training case class. So let me pull the class from here. Okay. And then I just need to do PY worker page dot student details. So this PY worker page is our training case. So on the training case, I have a student details page that will be having some data. I want to propagate all that student details page data into student details page on the feedback case. And this is the one that we'll be using on the UI. Okay, so let me save it. Okay, so this data transform is ready. For now, I'm just populating one page. You can populate in number of properties that you want to do. And then we will see if this case type rule. Another configuration is this, but before showing you what this is, uh, I'll just run what we have done so far and see if the case is getting created. Okay. Also, uh, let's quickly check the existing instances of feedback case so that we are sure which case got created. Okay, so F2013 is the last one that is existing in the system. Now, let us run this, okay, and see if our code is working. So, let's create a training case. From the training case, let us reach to the point where um, we have our automation. So, let me give some name. Let's say Priya, location Pune age 27 some email okay and then some number okay let's submit it 
Okay, so our code will trigger after this point. Okay, so if you see the case type, right, I have added my create case after this select interested training, which is the current assignment. Let's submit. Okay, let's go back to the feedback instances and let's refresh. So a new case gets created, which is feedback 2014. Let us open this and see if the data has propagated successfully. Let's click on go. There you go. So you see, earlier I showed you that this feedback case, uh, this particular assignment was blank because there was no data that was propagated. And uh, now if you see, we were successfully able to create the new case, which is feedback case from the training case. And we were also able to propagate some data. Okay, now coming back to the training case, Another thing is, at this point on the training case, there is no way of identifying which case has got created. Okay, so if you want to store <clears throat> specifically the case ID, if you see, right, property to store ID of the case. So if you want to store um, the newly created case ID into some property, so for that, on the calling case, for that, you need to use this option. So let's create a property. Uh, let's call it, oh, I already have a property called feedback case key. Okay, so I'll use this to store the ID of the newly created case on the training case. So let's me, let me do this, save. And in order to see the data has really stored into this property or not, let's add a step. Okay, let's call it uh, feedback case details. Okay, so the new case that gets created, those details I will show on this section. Okay, let's configure view. Let's select the property feedback case key. Let's make it read only and submit. Okay, let's save this. Now let's test it again. Training case. Okay, some name, Harry, Mumbai, 28, okay, some number and submit. Okay, at this point, the create case uh, smart shape should trigger. It should create a new feedback case for us and it should display the case ID that gets created onto the next screen. That is what we have configured so far. Okay, there you go. So you see, um, this assignment is the one that gets called after create case and I used a property called feedback case key to store the ID of the newly created case. Okay, now... There's no need to show this on UI, but you may be using this for different, different purpose, but just to show if the ID gets created or not, uh, that's what I have configured in this section. Okay. This is solely for the purpose of explaining in detail. Okay. Now, if we go back and see the instance of the feedback case, if we refresh it, let's open this case and we should be able to see that the data that I entered, right? Harry, Mumbai, this location and all this I entered on the training case, everything gets successfully propagated into the feedback case okay so this was a very simple and a very short explanation of how to use the create case smart shape in pega um this is not the only option of how you create a new case uh in pega you have n number of options that pega provides but this is one of those options okay and this is something that we widely use whenever we want to create a top level case or a child case in this session i explained how to create a top level case from another top level case right so I hope this uh, session was helpful and you guys were able to follow and understand the uh, concepts. Um, if you want me to uh, explain any other topics, uh, do let me know in comments. I will try to cover as much as possible. And always, thank you so much for listening in. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.